Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week, we've got a jam-packed show. We've got lightweight climbing wheels from DT Swiss, the new giant TCR, the winners of our Seller Italia giveaway, plus the Bike Vault, your upgrades, pain caves, and our main talking point, which are faster, rim brake bikes or disc brake bikes? We tested it in a wind tunnel. And uh, yeah, also lockdown hair has got so bad that I am resorting to wearing my native Yorkshire beret. Yeah, let's do it. You may remember that a while back, before Christmas, myself and John visited the Silverstone Sports Engineering Performance Hub wind tunnel and did a load of different experiments and made some videos. Now, one of the things that we did, but we didn't have time to finish and we, well, we weren't unable to finish it because of the lockdown was we were looking to a feature looking at the difference between rim brakes and disc brakes we wanted to analyze all the different aspects of them but as i said because of lockdown we're unable to do all of that but we do have one of the tests we did which was looking at them just aerodynamically and to see what the difference was there's no disputing that disc brakes offer far superior braking performance than rim brakes you know they're better in the wet they're better at heat dissipation they offer more consistent braking especially when you have carbon rims but what we wanted to find out is what if any is the aerodynamic difference on the speed. Is it a lot? Is it not very much? You know, how significant is it? Some manufacturers claim that disc brakes are more aerodynamic, whereas others claim rim brakes are more aerodynamic. We decided to find out for ourselves, kind of. Hopefully this will be useful information for you for your next bike purchase, or perhaps even if you're doing an upgrade. Now to do this, we got two Pinarello F12s, one with rim brakes, my one, and then an identical frame size uh, with disc brakes. The bikes were the same, they had the same cockpit, same frame size, were set up the same, had the same wheels. Um, the only difference was one was Shimano rim brakes and the other one was Shimano disc brakes. Now before we go any further and reveal the results, why not vote on our poll in the app? Which do you think was quicker? No cheating and fast forwarding to the end. Which do you think was quicker, the rim brake one or the disc brake one. Place your bets now. Bets, bets, bets. Also, a quick disclaimer. The, the tests and runs that we performed, what we were able to do with the limited time we had available. One of the things whenever you test anything or do any experiments is it inevitably leads to more questions. And, you know, if, if we haven't tested a particular thing, the likelihood is it's not that we didn't think of it, it's just we had to prioritise certain things with the time and resource we had available. To test this, we ran both bikes with a rider, me, but this does introduce potential inaccuracy into the experiment because slight changes that you don't even realize you're doing in rider position can massively impact the uh, aerodynamic result. The Silverstone Tunnel does have a projection guideline system the rider can see, which helps you hold a more consistent position, but still, it is a source of inaccuracy. So to mitigate this, we also ran both of the bikes on their own. Now this has the disadvantage, although you reduce some of the error of the rider, it's not a complete system, but it does still provide useful information nonetheless. The results were as follows. With just the bike and no rider at naught degrees yaw, so that's with the wind direction coming head on to the bike, the rim brake bike was faster. At 25 kilometers an hour, it was just one watt faster. At 35 uh, kilometers an hour, three watts faster. And seven watts faster at 45 kilometers an hour. Now this, uh, when put into perspective, you can use a rule of thumb that says one watt is equivalent to 0.1 second saved per kilometer. So this sort of difference in drag isn't that much and is also within the realms of experimental error, I would say too. Um, but the, the rim brake bike was consistently faster in this example. It's also somewhat expected when you see that the disc brake bike does have slightly more frontal area than the rim brake bike because of the caliper and the disc located on the front fork. But, you know, as I said, it's not a huge amount. But what about with a rider? And what about at different yaw angles? That's different wind angles. Um, well, with a rider at 25 kilometers an hour, the rim brake bike was again 
faster by just four watts, uh, 13 watts faster at 35 kilometers an hour, and 16 watts faster at 45 kilometers an hour. We then performed um, a sweep of different yaw angles at 40 kilometers an hour, five degrees, 10 degrees, and 15 degrees. I mean, we would have liked to have done uh, more tests on this uh, again, but we were limited, as I said, by the amount of time that we had. Now, the difference between the two at five degrees was just four watts at 40 kilometers an hour. At 10 degrees, it was 10 watts uh, difference um, in favor of the rim brake bike, and just five watts at 15 degrees. Interestingly, the Pinarello F12, both rim and disc, um, actually exhibited when paired with a rider, lower drag at 10 and 15 degrees yaw than it did at five degrees yaw, which, well, it's, well, kind of intriguing really, but that's kind of going off topic a bit and I don't know what to read into that too much. But I was intrigued by the results and I was aware of the limitations of, of testing just one bike because all bikes are different. We can't generalize with this result and say, all rim brake bikes are faster than all disc brake bikes because, well, they're all different bikes with different shapes. Um, so I reached out to Xavier Disley from Aero Coach and asked if he'd tested any uh, disc brake bikes versus rim brake bikes himself. And he said that he had. He tested a Scott foil that was set up identically, both rim brake and disc brake. And the results he found when testing them around a velodrome were that they came out roughly the same or within experimental error of each other, suggesting that there wasn't really any substantial aerodynamic difference between the two. Overall, although we recorded the rim brake bike to be slightly quicker than the disc brake bike, the difference wasn't massive. And for the speeds that most of us ride at most of the time, I mean, it's pretty insignificant. And it's not possible to generalize and say that all rim brake bikes are therefore faster than all disc brake bikes because all bikes are different and it could well swing the opposite way uh, on a different design. But I think what we can say from this testing and this investigation is that any difference between the rim brake and disc brake models of a particular bike aren't likely to be hugely significant. They probably exist, but they're not gonna be massive. And when you weigh in other things, such as, you know, the fact that, yeah, this brake bike is slightly heavier, typically 250, 300 grams heavier than the rim brake equivalent. But then you also weigh in, well, I know which I would prefer on a wet descent or, you know, a technical descent, and also for not trashing my fancy carbon wheels in the wet. You know, there's, there's swings and roundabouts and arguments still in favor of both. And something else I would like to test is to have more time to investigate the effects of crosswind on disc brakes, because as you increase that yaw angle, you know, you, the disc does pre present more area to the wind than not having a disc brake. But, oh man, I just love geeking out on all this stuff and I just wish I had more time. And as I said, this is one of the things, whenever you test anything, you get results and that just leads to more questions that you want to, to answer. But, you know, let us know what you think in the comments section uh, down below and, and also on, on social media. And don't forget to vote in the app. And um, if any of you have any expertise on on sort of you know crosswinds and high yaw angles, I'd love to hear what you have to say about them on disc brakes. Check check the status of the COVID Barnet. Yep, still horrendous. Put the hat back on. Okay. Now it's time to take a look at some of your pain caves that you've been sending in because we are spending more time than ever in our pain caves due to the isolation. And I actually did a three and a half hour turbo session the other day. That's the longest I've ever, ever done on a turbo. And it's actually longer than Ollie's ever done on a turbo too. Just saying. Anyway, let's take a look at who we've got first. First up, we've got this one in from Wolf. Decided to convert his daughter's playroom into a new pain cave. Um, plenty of room for some good workouts and some bike maintenance too. We've got the bike on the very snazzy turbo trainer, got the two screens, one with Zwift and one actually watching the inner tube challenge that we did on the GCN tech show the other week. Um, it was basically a presenter's challenge. Who could change an inner tube the quickest? Jeremy won by a mile. 
Um, so if you've got time, make sure you send in a little video of you doing the inner tube challenge and see if you can beat Jeremy's time because he's pretty fast. Um, also got a running machine there. Could be a triathlete, nothing wrong with that. Um, two fans on the go, staying cool. Got a gym in here too. This is a full on pain cave, a squat rack, deadlift bar, park tool, um, bike stand to do a bit of maintenance. And I don't know if you spotted a 3D printer in there too. And he said he's been printing some much needed medical supplies and the occasional bike part too. So next week, can you please send in some of the 3D printed bike parts that you've been making? Cause we'd love to see them here on the GCN Tech Show. But this is a full, fully kitted out pain cave. Don't think it can get much better than that. Well done. Here's our next pain cave slash dungeon in from Aaron in Litchfield. This is his pain cave. Got his two Trek Amanda and Madone there with his one of the treks on the turbo with his turbo tire. Very good, Aaron. I learned this the hard way and I didn't used to use a turbo tire and it would just destroy the tire and it would just be flat where it's meant to be rounded. Well, it depends how much power you've actually got. So if you've got a lot of power, you know, you will destroy the tire. So make sure you get a turbo tire. They're just really nice thick tires. And they won't get destroyed and they'll keep your road tires nice and fresh. Um, got your bike box there, ready for when we can go back on our cycling holidays. But for now, we have to stay safe and stay inside. Um, something I haven't seen in the pain caves before. Like I've seen lots of fans in the pain caves, but Aaron's actually got a heater in here, a little radiator. Um, maybe he's trying to make it into a heat dungeon, maybe? I don't know. And also, very good from Aaron here. He's actually got a mini fridge in the pain cave. Imagine this, Let's get off the turbo, grab a nice cold protein shake or a beer, whatever you fancy, either's fine. After your turbo session, that would be the dream. Nice TV on the wall there to keep you entertained whilst doing your long isolation sessions. Very good pain cave, Aaron, well done. Remember to keep uploading your pain caves to the GCN app and leave a little description in the description box with any hacks that you've done to your pain caves while being in lockdown. It's time now for hot tech. First up this week, we've got a new helmet from POC. They've taken their existing ventral model and added a clever medical ID chip to it. So it's the same as the standard ventral air, but it now includes an NFC medical chip or stands for near field communication. Now this fancy chip contains details such as your blood type, um, your emergency contacts, any allergies you have, insurance details, your address, things like that. And the thinking behind it is that if you're unlucky enough to have an accident and can't communicate or are rendered unconscious, then first responders can uh, scan the chip and therefore retrieve that key information which will be of used to when they're trying to treat you and save you. Now, this chip doesn't require any batteries to, to operate and it can be read, um, according to POC, by most smartphones, including things like iPhone 8s have the technology to read these kinds of chips. So quite interesting to see if this technology will take off and we'll start to see it in more helmets, but yeah, anything that helps people when they're ill, it's a good, a good move in my book. New bike alert now. Giant has launched the latest version of the TCR, which they claim is lighter, stiffer, and more aerodynamic than the previous version. Classic bike launch claims. Now, although, uh, well, prima facie, the new TCR looks remarkably similar to the previous one, Giant says that although subtle, the changes are significant. So first up, it's said to be much more aerodynamic, and that's down to revised tube shapes throughout the design and significant savings have been made over the previous model there. Also, there's a revised uh, layup process. They're using a robotic uh, carbon fiber layup process now with a robotic arm, which is said to be more efficient and more consistent in laying up all the intricate little bits of carbon fiber on the frame uh, than a human would in a normal process. And they also have a new thin line painting uh, technology as well, which is said to save 50 grams per frame in paint compared to the conventional painting process, which uses, well, seven layers of well, primers and paints and various other things. Pretty cool, that. 
Overall, I'm pleasantly surprised to see a new bike launch that doesn't have drop stays. Makes a nice change. I mean, every bike has drop stays these days. I like drop stays, I think they look cool, but it's nice that we see one without them. But let us know what you think. We'll have a poll in the app, hot or not, the new giant TCR. And hopefully we'll be bringing a first look video on the new TCR, if we can get our hands on one in the lockdown. Uh, that's due to happen around 5th of May, so stay tuned for that. Very cool looking bike. New lightweight climbing wheels from DT Swiss now. Uh, the Swiss manufacturer has just unveiled its latest Monchasseral wheel set. And the Monchasseral name is typically given to the sort of lightest and, and most bling and stiffest wheels in the DT range. And it's actually the name of a climb that's located very close to DT Swiss's headquarters in Switzerland. And the employees regularly ride up that climb, which is pretty cool. And the new wheels are tubeless, disc brakes, specific and are said to weigh just 1,222 grams, which for a tubeless set of wheels is really impressive because that's right into the realms of what we'd expect for a tubular set of wheels. Now the rim uh, is 18 millimeters wide and hooked, so not hookless yet. We're seeing more and more brands go hookless. So that's quite intriguing. They're 24 millimeters deep and they're running on the latest version of DT's 180 hubs with ceramic bearings. Very nice indeed. And finally in hot tech this week, we've got the nice news that Orbea are auctioning off an Orca OMX like the one I've got and a complete set of Euskatel Euskadi Pro kit. The Orca's actually in Euskatel uh, team colors as well, which is rather cool. And this is all in a bid to raise money for UNICEF to help fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, if you'd like to take part in the auction, then we'll post a link down below. It's happening on eBay, and I'm told that all proceeds are gonna go towards UNICEF. Over to Manon now with the competition winners. We're now going to announce the winners from our Stella Italia Flight Boost giveaway from the unboxing we did a few weeks ago. The winners are Patrick Hudson from Canada, Ahmed Tuzel from Turkey, Mehmet Nakiti from Turkey also. Great to see we have so many Turkish viewers. Michael Afruman from Germany and Martin Wheeler from New Zealand. Congratulations to all the winners. The saddles are in the post. Cha -ching. It's now time for screw riding upgrades by upgrades, where you submit upgrades that you've made to your bikes, equipment, cycling lives, and you submit like evidence that you've done this. Uh, the more evidence, the better, for a chance to win the ultimate prize, the GCN cap. I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna try and find a GCN cap. Hang on, I must have one somewhere. Ugh. Found one. I'll remove the, uh, the Yorkshire flat cap. There we go. Right. Um, now, before we look at this week's entrance, let's see what the results are from last week. So last week was Battle of the Restorations. We had M Bates 46 1989 Trek uh, versus Erwin Schwitz, a uh, 40-year-old restoration. And the winner, quite convincingly, with 67%, well done, um, was Erwin. So get in contact on Facebook and we'll get the uh, cap in the post to you. Uh, this week, I've got some great upgrades. So first up is Stephen Nappet, who says that during lockdown, he thought he would take the kids out of uh, homeschooling and teach them some bike maintenance skills. Good skills to teach the kids. I mean, it's very important, I agree. Um, now he took his boring, he says, I don't think it's very boring, fixie commuter, which he'd got from Decathlon, and he turned it into a more desirable bike. So check this out, right? So there it is to begin with. Uh, and then he's changed the bars, he's changed the stem, the saddle, the seat post, the pedals, put a red chain on it. Cool, I guess. Red chains, yeah, a bit cool. Um, and he's matched those with the cable housings as well. Nice color coordination. Also, good color coordination with your fence as well in the background. Nice, I mean, it's almost, almost camouflaged in there. Um, I like that Chinelli bar tape as well, and you've put some cross tires on there as well. Nice and nice and good for going out with bike rides with the kids and go on some nice trails and things. Um, and you say you've done that for all just 150 pounds, which is, well, absolute bargain. 
Nice. I like it when people do that for such little money. And he says that the kids really enjoyed helping out, um, helping you do that and learning and stuff. And you've been using it for your daily exercise. And you also say that the kids were very proud to have helped. And hopefully you think that you, they think that you're slightly cooler now. Um, I'm sure they do. I'm, I think you're cooler now. And, and that's what really counts, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, it's not going to be plain sailing for you because you're up against Jeremy Crespin, who has submitted this on the app saying that he wanted a gravel bike and he always loved GT's uh, triple triangle frame design. I've always loved that as well. When I was a kid growing up, my next door neighbor had one and um, I was quite jealous. It was a really nice bike. I secretly wanted it. So anyway, he scoured Craigslist and found this mulberry colored GT Arette and immediately fell in love. It wasn't long before he decided to strip it down and fully rebuild it from the ground up. He wound up a fork, an Arn 40 chainring, SRAM carbon cranks, replaced a Mavic Axiom for Astral Solistic tubeless rims, finished up with an FSA SLK carbon cockpit and carbon physique area. Bling saddle that for this, wow. So there it is to begin with. Look at those old bar ends on there and that old saddle and grip shifters. Oh man, I used to, I had grip shifters on, on a mountain bike. It was terrible. <laughs> oh, oh my. That is, uh, you got some new bits and stuff and a hammer. Always a, my favorite tool, the, the, the hammer. So many uses. And there it is. Wow. That, um, those, those uh, crank arms are really bling on that bike. That is a really cool bike. I like the seat post on there as well. Very nice, but curious that you've not gone for, uh, for drop bars on your gravel bike conversion. Interesting, probably would have gone for drop bars myself, but it's not up for me, um, it's up to you guys. So who's it gonna be? You decide, vote in the app. There's a link uh, down to the poll in the app in the description below. And it's time now for the bike vault. So we're gonna head over to Manon, who's gonna do the honors. Hope she's got her bell ready. Now it's time for the bike vault, where you submit pictures of your bikes and I vote if they're nice or super nice. And if they're super nice, they get put to the bike vault forever and ever and ever. And the bike vault bell gets rang. If you do um, disagree with my judgments, which you might, you can have your own say by voting on the bikes in the GCN app. First up this week, we've got this one in from Ben One Kenvy, and this is his specialized Venge. Right, I don't really know where to start with this because you know it is a nice bike. It's I love the paint. I oh, yeah, I, I just like the paint on it, the metallic purple. I do like that. But, but, but we're not in Biggie Smalls. The valves aren't lined up. The cranks isn't at three o'clock. The light and the saddlebag have been left on. We haven't got a nice clean background, but we've lent it up against a ladder and there's a rope in the background. So, you know what I'm gonna say. It's a nice. This bike has potential to be a super nice, but you need to watch a video Ollie and John did on the bike fault rules and then send the bike in and follow all the rules because it could be a super nice. Next up, we've got this one from Julian Alaphilippe. Now this could be the real Julian Alaphilippe. I mean, he's on a Pinarello, but it could be. This is Pinarello in front of the Harry Jerome statue in Vancouver. Um, very nice background, very, very nice. Um, nice clean background, and then you've got a nice, nice view of the city in the back. Um, lovely Pinarello in Biggie Smalls. We've got the valves lined up. John Cannings would approve of the white handlebar tape on the white saddle. Very nice. Uh, taking the saddle bag off. We're looking good. I mean, I'm gonna super nice that. First super nice of the bike vault. Clive Jones has sent in this picture of his Canyon Ultimate CF SLX 9.0. Very nice. And this picture is actually taken on one of my favorite training loops around Carmarthenshire. 
um, yeah, he sent in this canyon with some nice zip 404 wheels, lined the valves up, we're in Biggie Smalls, no bottles, no saddlebag, got a nice little neat light on the front, bit of a different angle to what we usually have, but I think that's to get a bit of the castle in, well, what's left of the castle, but I quite like it. Nice matte black, black handlebar, black saddle. I'm gonna super nice it. Well done, Clive. Just in case you're all wondering why I'm not going super mental with this bell is because it is a very, very loud bell and it would, it would hurt your ears if I went mental with it. So that's why we're just doing little, little rings. Next up, we've got this one in from ho underscore ke. This is an absolutely beautiful look, KG196. Um, I mean, that is so cool. You'd look so cool riding that. I want one. Um, it has Dura Ace 74XX series group set and Mavic Cosmic first generation wheels. That is so cool and everything is perfect on it. Line the valves up, the cranks, Biggie Smalls. That is so cool. I like the pointed down stem as well. That's really, really cool. But yeah, I really like that. So super nice. The last bike in the bike vault this week is this from Nathan. And he has just fitted new tubs to his race wheels. And remember, we do do all kinds of bikes on the bike vault. Not just road bikes, time trial bikes, fixie bikes, tracks bikes. So send them all in. But this is a very fast looking time trial bike. Ollie would appreciate this. Um, and the first thing that stands out is the chain ring on that bike. That looks big. Let's see if he says what size it is. A 60 tooth chain ring. Wow. That's, that's the size of a dinner plate. But this is a very nice bike. We've got the crank at three o'clock. Nice quark crank on there. Got the stickers lined up. Cosmic wheels. Very nice aero cockpit here. Nice handlebars, physique saddle. Very clean, no bottle cages for the aero games. I'm gonna say this is a lovely, super nice. So that's it for the bike fall this week. I hope you've enjoyed. And remember, you can submit pictures of your own bikes to the bike vault by using the GCN app. And if you did disagree with any of my judgments, you can head over to the app and vote on this week's bikes. Well, that's it for this week's show. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, then please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you'd like to support the channel and what we do, then you can head over to the GCN shop. We've got all manner of goodies, amazing t-shirts, GCN caskets, Pika, there you go. Um, let's check the status of the hair. Yeah, it's getting out of control. Fortunately, the Park Toolbox, I mean, it has absolutely everything you could ever need in, uh, in the apocalypse, including scissors. So now I've located the scissors in the park toolbox, I, I'll probably um, well, have, a, have a trim or try to. So tune in next week to see uh, how, how I get on. In the meantime, I just want that. Okay. If you'd like to watch another video, click on screen now. See you next week. Bye.